It's a very unusual alchemy. We get to use all the elements, earth, air, fire, water, people, it's wonderful. I'm Liz Buchheit, and I am a jewelry designer and goldsmith, and a filigree artist. I'm Michael Seiler, and I'm a goldsmith, jewelry designer, and storyteller. And we run Crown Trout Jewelers. We are full on as far as making everything by hand, every single part of it, whether it's stone cutting to uh, finishing to fabricating, our hands touch everything. We are sort of old school in the way that we do all of our work in-house. We do it all here very much like an old guild school. There's so much of uh, jewelry that's made overseas and it's made by machines. Um, you know, designed and engineered on computers. And the, the only thing that the hands really touch on other jewelry is basically the polishing aspect of it, maybe a little stone setting. The mission of Crown Trout is actually to um, make people aware of our art form, which is goldsmithing and silversmithing, and to give them a good background on how things are made, what makes us different from other jewelers, and hopefully make them better consumers when they are out buying jewelry. I come from a Scandinavian background, uh, and I do a lot of traditional type jewelry, which is, if you know a little bit about Norwegian or Swedish jewelry, there are very specific guidelines and techniques for making the type of jewelry that go with their traditional bunads or folk, folk costumes. I kind of take that and give it a little different twist and kind of lift it out of its traditional origins and make it a little bit more contemporary and modern day. Something that I've always found really um, inspiring is some of the creation stories about how uh, certain gods or goddesses would sing things into existence. They would have a certain song to sing flowers or clouds or the moons or moon or rain into existence. And those are the types of uh, themes that are running through my head as I do the filigree jewelry. Because it, again, it's, it's drawing with wire and even though I do draw like basic design first, I kind of get an idea of what it is in my mind. I actually allow myself to be swept along by that sort of inner dialogue or inner narrative while I'm curling the wire and soldering the wire and rearranging it. I might end up with something completely different than what I originally had intended. And lots of people call that happy accidents, but I just call it sort of riding that wave. My specialty is uh, working with uh, different types of uh, stone, uh, everything from uh, dinosaur bone to different types of jaspers all over the world. And I hand cut um, all the pieces and design my pieces around a story that I've written. As Mars glowed in the night sky, the suspended moon made the field mouse hunger for more than flowering prairies had to offer. Summoning the wind to her feet, she flew to the milky moon, only to realize that the moon was no more made of cheese than the earth was a glass marble. Mistakes can be made, but no one can argue the brilliance and power of a cheesy dream. It's somewhat time consuming to be able to, to, <laughs> to write a story about each piece, but it, I, I think that um, jewelry really should be more than just an adornment. It should be, um, something that speaks to the soul. I start with a rough piece of uh, jasper, that, and then I cut that and I form it. 
after I have it, you know, cut down, polished, I then make the metal bezel that goes around it and do all the, the metal work, and then at the end, set the stone. Jewelry is very, very special to me because um, while a painter might have canvas as a palette, I look at the human body as the palette. And I feel, especially the art that we do is at Crown Trot Jewelers, it is really, really interesting in the way that we are carried along through a person's life. When someone purchases a piece of jewelry or they buy one of our pieces, they are, at, they are a portable art form. By the time we're all is said and done, I'm always amazed at that, and I'm, I never get tired of that concept. I won first place in a bridal category for the Women's Jewelry Association's Diva Award competition uh, for a bridal tiara. This is the award-winning tiara from the Dazzle Diva competition in New York City. This piece is entitled Autumnal Tiara, and it is made from hand-forged sterling silver, some beautiful black and white pearls, and these very exquisite hand-cut druzy quartz leaves. Each one of these is a little bit different. These were all pieces that I collected over the years of going to gem shows, and finally came together in one piece. It was a great accolade, especially to be known for tiaras in Lanesboro, Minnesota, representing Minnesota in New York City. It was awesome. We've been teaching for about 12 years combined, and we really, really, not every, not every school might necessarily have a jewelry program, but there's so many aspects of uh, jewelry making that, again, what is wonderful, I think, is that you get to do all sorts of media that's drawing, it's painting, it's building, it's sculpting, it's working with tools, it's working with, with uh, paint, brushes, all that sort of stuff. Where I see jewelry making going um, now as an industry, um, it's going more um, the way of computers and machines carving things out. I think the one thing that uh, Liz and myself are trying to preserve is um, learning how to do all those things that computers and machines do for us and be able to do them by hand and um, you know become very adept at um, being able to do everything from stone setting to wax carving, all the traditional things that have to be done to, to make a piece. And I think that's the most important part. Mm -hmm.